last night I was watching a TV show and it was an interaction between a husband and wife. They were standing and talking. And while the husband was talking, the camera panned over to the wife while he's still speaking. When he was done, the she started to speak. Camera stayed on her. Then it went over to him while she's speaking to watch his reaction. And this went back and forth, back and forth. And it was a reminder to me that today's audience, whether watching TV shows, movies, sporting events, are so accustomed to constant screen changes that if we're not doing that as presenters, we're dropping the ball and it's why we're losing their attention. I realized to this point, that's all I've been doing is talking to the camera. Let's change that. Here's a quick example for you on how to change the pace in your presentations. In my signature keynote called Build Your High Impact Storytelling Abs, I teach people a unique storytelling framework. What, at one point in the presentation, I ask the question, why? Why does this framework work so effectively? Well, let's take a look at Building a Story Brand from Donald Miller. If you haven't read this book, it's one of the best books that you can read on this topic. It gives you some great insights. And Donald Miller starts with an important question. And that question is, what are the two main functions of the human brain? In the chat box, please put what you believe the two functions of the human brain are. Now, I'll wait maybe 15, 20 seconds. And I'll read through some of the answers. And I say, these are all good. And many of them support what Donald Miller says. And by the way, I agree with him because I've done the research myself. And here's what we found. The two main functions of the human brain are, number one, survival. That's pretty obvious. Sleep, eat, food, shelter. But the one that appeals to us most as communicators is the second one, which is conservation. So what does that mean, conservation of energy? It's really simple, actually. The brain is always looking for shortcuts. It wants to find a way to use the fewest possible calories to solve a task. So when we're communicating, if we create these long, convoluted messages with lots of details and information, the audience's brain is going to shut down. And because of these devices, right, those are constantly calling out to them. It's very easy to lose people's attention. Well, if you, somebody wants to create six-pack abs, they've got to create a leaner diet, right? Cut out all the excess calories. Well, we have to do the same when we're creating our messages. Cut out the excess calories. Get to a clear, concise message that is simple and easy to remember. All right, stepping out of the presentation, you see how that works. I talked to this camera went to a slide, came back, talked to the camera, sent people to the chat box, tied in their answers to the next slide and kept changing back and forth. Now, you don't have to change every two to three seconds like TV shows and sporting events do. But if you want to be effective online, it's vital that you change the pace of the presentation on a continuing basis from start to finish. Now, this comes with a word of warning. This is not easy to do. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of mistakes. So here's the key. I don't have scientific research behind this. I think it takes three times the effort to put on an equally effective virtual presentation as it does in person. 